Yes, it certainly is a marvellous sight here at Football Park for the grand final at halftime in the reserves. It's the Eagles, 9-6-60. Port Adelaide, 4-6-30. A margin of 30 points, the main goal scorers. Firstly for the Eagles, two east to Bergen and Somerville. Two east, Pyman, Hannum, Bullis and Whitehouse, one each. And for the Magpies, Kemp, Francis, Boyd and Wilson all kicking one goal. Well, shortly we'll preview the big one today, the league grand final between Port Adelaide and Glenelg. But first of all, let's take you to a round of the Stanley Tools 1990 Australia Driving Championship. It's round seven from Winton, Victoria. Your commentators are Alan Jones and Dale Eastlake. Lights are up now. Watch for the green light off the line. It's the SBA car, which is an identical type of car that Mark Scaife had to withdraw this morning because of suspension problems and Simon Kane in the very pretty little car. Kane wins the start, he gets away very, very well. Powell is standing in the first corner. Simon Kane gets around very, very well. McLaughlin tucks in underneath the wing. Now tries to get a little bit better position as they go up into the back end of the circuit. Poole is in third place and looking pretty good at the moment. So a good start from Simon Kane. Yeah, Mark McLaughlin did the right thing too because the problem with the circuit, you haven't got very long from the start down to the first right-hander. And if you're not very careful, the oops, oh, Drew Price having a major go in there. He, yeah, yeah, a little bit over exuberance. Oh, bad luck for Drew Price because he threw out a challenge from fourth place. He's back on the track, gets over the, uh, the ripple strip. But as he tucked it in there, just losing traction, gets on the loose stuff and loses it. Now, Simon Kane out in front, the man who is leading the series at the moment, Mark McLaughlin in the Falgo car, doing a very, very good job in second. That's the best that they've been for some time in the series, but Kane getting a little buffer now. Yes, he's opened up about three or four corners, which is not a bad effort on the first lap. As I was saying, going down into this right-hand corner here, it's so close to the start that the guy that's on the front row of the grid, if he's not very careful, the guy that's on the second row can get him. Good shots here from our in-car camera. Mark McLaughlin, you're riding with him at the moment. That's Kane you can see up in front. You can see there's not very much movement in the steering wheels at all. These cars going down through the gearbox now, puts the boot back into it, closes a little on Kane, who gets a little sideways in front of him. Now they start to ease around, and he's trying to pick him up. Watch the apex of the corner. This is really what it's all about, just keeping nice and neat and tidy, nice and precise all the way. Yes, he's caught up to him a little bit on that, isn't it? Now we've got a similar shot of Mark and uh, looking back towards him, and you can see the sort of buffeting that these guys get through the wind. He's actually, he's caught up a little bit on Simon through this section. So, Mark McLaughlin in the Falgo Cosmetic Car, and it's quite a story, this, you know. The company did a little bit of research and found out that most women between 18 and 35 really like to get involved with open-wheel racing cars. They thought it was a good idea to be able to market a product, which is uh, originally a French uh, cosmetic company. They've come out to Australia, two cars, a big investment, and also sponsoring the final round. So it's a big commitment from the sponsor. It certainly is, but as you said, as they went into it fairly thoroughly and they discovered that most... Uh, females between the ages that you just mentioned actually prefer open wheeler racing than touring car racing um, so well, they've done their homework and it seems to be working quite well for them so that's Mark McLaughlin running second Mark Poole is in third place and he's driving the Shrike car the winner at Sandown and a little bit off the pace here at the moment he had a lot of spins yesterday I'm told uh, I know we saw a couple of late in the afternoon, but the suspension wasn't quite to his liking, and he was trying so hard in the back part of the circuit, lost the car a number of times. So maybe that's knocked his confidence off. Maybe they haven't been able to fix that problem. Actually, I was talking to Mark McLaughlin. He's driven the, both the Rolt R21 and the SPA, and he said the SPA is better around here because it's a shorter wheelbase car, and being such a tight, twisty circuit, the shorter wheelbase allows him to throw it around a lot better than the slightly longer wheelbase Rolt. We'll take you back to Winton in one moment's time for that final lap at uh, Magnificent Race. Of course, it was run earlier today, but firstly, let's recap the lucky winners of our competitions here on Nine's Wide World of Sports. Firstly, the Woodies winner. Of course, a couple of gold passes to the Australian Grand Prix. Tracy Allway of Clavelli Park. Congratulations, Tracy. Great prizes there. And our Sip and Save viewer competition. We're a lovely tip to Penang. And the winner there was Bev Turner. So the girl's doing it pretty well today. Bev Turner of Happy Valley. Let's take you back now to the Stanley Tools 1990 Australia Drivers' Championship. Race 7 from Winton. Your commentators, Alan Jones and Dale Take One lap to go. Uh, and during the week, uh, Simon is in the sound department with the 60 Minutes team, I believe. Yes, part of the Channel 9 organisation. Uh, he's a sound recorder for 60 Minutes. And putting together stories 
uh, for that great show. So uh, pretty busy boy. If he's not listening to sound, he's certainly creating some. And obviously has a bit of patience as well if he's in the sound. What I think about that? Simon Jay. <laughs> Down the main straight again. On his final lap. So it's been a fantastic drive, really, from Simon Kane. He really has done it all right. He got a lot of pressure from Mark McLaughlin in the early laps, and he just held it all together and uh, kept his tidy lines. And, of course, he made uh, then. McLaughlin had to make the move and uh, got, got a little bit slippery. Whoop, you just saw the back slide out then. I don't know whether he probably just let it go out a little bit wide, got into what they call the marbles which is the pieces of rubber that come off the tyres as the race progress, and then they build up a shoulder on the outside, and if you slide wide and get into that, which we call the marbles, it's very, very slippery indeed. Looks like that's what he did. Yeah, once you get on that slippery stuff, that big rubber behind you really starts to move around. So 12 seconds ahead of Poole as he takes the flag, wins round seven of the Stanley Tools, Australia's Drivers' Championship, a fine win building on his point score for this championship now waiting for mark Poole to come round in the strike he'll take second spot he flashes past now 12 seconds the difference after 27 laps waiting for third place which was mark mclaughlin in the falgo car and i think they'd be pretty happy with that result looking at looking at mark Poole now as he tries to let a little air into the helmet because it is very warm here at uh, winton this afternoon fantastic conditions for racing as the field now go under the chequered flag so a pretty good drive from simon kane certainly building on his series yes it's by no means over though uh, pool by finishing in second spot has still kept his hopes alive for the championship but uh, no, Simon drove very clean, very smooth, and of course that's exactly what you have to do in these cars. All right, let's recap the final positions in the Stanley Tools Australian Drivers' Championship. Simon Kane takes the number one spot from Mark Poole and Mark McLaughlin. Good drives all around there. Yes, and the young South Australian driver there, Mark Poole, doing extremely well, finishing second in the 1990 Australian Drivers' Championship from, uh, of course, Winton. OK, we'll, uh, we've, uh, we'll preview the big game in one moment's time between Port Adelaide and Glenelg. It should be a magnificent grand final, but two men have a very important task this afternoon, and uh, David Mackay has the pleasure of talking to them. Down in the umpires' room and grand final umpires, Mark Mackey and Rick Kinnear. Mark, uh, first grand final today. The nerves must be getting to you. They are. They've been bad all morning. <laughs> and what about last night? Do you get any sleep at all? I did sleep more than what my wife did, though. <laughs> Rick, uh, grand final number five today. Uh, must be a great thrill. Oh, it is a great thrill, David. But uh, they don't get any easier, I can tell you that. OK, the, the hard parts today, uh, what are you going to be looking for as, you, as the game starts? Well, nothing really, David. We're just gonna, we have to treat it as another game. So if it happens, it happens. But it's no good trying to work out what's going to happen. And Mark, have you got a tip for us? Who do you think's going to win? It'll be a draw. <laughs> so you can come back and umpire again next week? That's right. Two grand finals in two weeks. <laughs> Wouldn't be a bad effort. Now tell me, this year you've probably been the most improved umpire in league ranks and you've been rewarded with the grand final. What do you put the improvement down to this year? Uh, a lot better fitness is the uh, major point. You, uh, you were injured in a league match here last year, weren't you? I did. I um, hurt a shoulder and I subsequently missed nine weeks. And Rick, uh, you've been a pretty consistent performer over the last few years. Uh, grand final number five today. Great reward for that. Uh, how many more years have you got left in you? Oh, I'm a year-by-year -year proposition, David. Uh, I'll just wait and see what happens next year. But uh, I'd definitely like to go next year. But uh, after that, who knows? Well, fellas, good luck this afternoon. Uh, it's not going to be an easy one. We're all expecting a vigorous encounter. I'm sure you'll do a good job. Thank you very much, David. Thanks, David. <laughs> Welcome back to Football Park. It's a marvellous day here for the big one, the 1990 League Grand Final. It's half-time in the reserves, and West Tollens lead 9-6 to Port Adelaide 4-6. A great first half by the Eagles, and no doubt a very uh, toey man at the moment is the coach of the Tigers, Graham Corns. He now talks with Neville Roberts. Thanks, Ken, and with me, Graham. You've played in eight Grand Finals, coach five, that's 13 appearances. Does it ever change the feeling? Not really. I mean, it's a lot different when you're coaching than when you're playing, but there's still the apprehension and the uh, butterflies in the stomach, so... It's a very special feeling, though. It is, and uh, the preparation, you've had uh, something like uh, two weeks now to think about it and get ready for it. Over that period, has there been anything in particular that you've tried to emphasise with the players? 
Well, it's the same. I, mean, I've, I played in eight grand finals and only won one, and I think a lot of those grand finals that we lost, we defeated ourselves because, uh, you know, we just put too much into it. We were so worked up and so keyed up, and we played the game over and over in our mind. So I think it's a matter of being able to keep their feet well and truly firmly planted on the ground yep. and have their focus on the things that are important for today. And uh, obviously you're going to have guys who are nervous and yep. some guys will handle it better, better than others, but it's a once-in-a-lifetime chance for some players. Right. Some players are lucky enough to do it more than that. So it's a matter of being able to make the most of the opportunity. And you've got a lot of young boys playing uh, in, the, in the game today. Is there anything you've tried to do for those guys in terms of advice or are you really leaving that up to the senior players on the ground? No, well, you, you have a quiet word with the, the younger players if it's obvious they need it. I think most of them are handling it pretty well. Yep. Um, we've got a, a fortunate blend of experience and young players and hopefully the, the senior players will, will show the way out there. But it's the enthusiasm and the exuberance of root youth which uh, can turn games like this as well. Indeed it has and there's been some uh, press about Port's injuries but I guess uh, having played against Port and, uh, and uh, seen them play a lot you, would, uh, you, wouldn't ex you wouldn't expect any injuries from their side to really adjust uh, their attitude to the game or even their performance today. Well, they've lost two players. We've lost an important player. I think the scales are well and truly balanced and they'll have 20 desperate, committed dedicated players out there and we need to have the same. Well look, it's, uh, it, um, you talked about balance and Clayton Lamb, did that really cause you too much problem with your balance? Just a little bit because he was a specialist half forward flanker and a, yeah. and a brilliant player as well, could just kick that magical goal and we just don't have a player that, of his type to fit nicely into the spot. We've had to improvise a little bit. Well it's a magnificent, much, but a, little bit. a little bit. Well good luck with it all Graham and uh, Channel 9 and I would like to thank you and I'm sure the South Australian public for giving up some re really valuable minutes of your day to speak with us and I appreciate it. Thanks Ned. Cheers. Neville Roberts there talking to Graham Corns and Jumbo Pinch. You've played in four grand finals. Yep. How would the butterflies be now, son? Well, they're absolutely unbelievable. Wouldn't the they? people coming in and you get out onto the ground and you just cannot wait for this day, for this minute, for two o'clock, Ken, today. It'll be Nothing. fantastic. It'll be a great game of football between Port Adelaide and the Tigers. Back with more footy after the break. Stay with us. And welcome back to Football Park, just into the third quarter of the Reserves Grand Final. Port Adelaide 4-7, trail the Eagles 9-6. Your commentators are Rick Davies, Neville Robertson, Bucky Cunningham. Thank you, KG. Just over one minute played and Damian Mead has taken the mark. Uh, well forward of centre-half forward, between centre-half forward and full forward for the Eagles. And will, from there, just about, uh, will certainly make the distance, should post a goal. He's directly in front. He has played well today. And it's, this will extend the Eagles' margin. It was a margin of 30 points at half time. The Magpies went down in the first 30 seconds of this quarter and scored a point through Mark Kemp. But Mead on the boot, straight through the centre, and Damian Mead has kicked his first goal. Magnificent bit of play there by West Torrens. Port Adelaide got into attack, as uh, Brian said, and you can see here on your screen. Have a look at Mead. Not a Port Adelaide player within 30 metres of him. And I would have thought, straight after half-time, being down about uh, 30 points, I would have thought that the Port Adelaide players would have really picked up the, uh, their opposition, but they just haven't, Brian. As part of the problem and the reason that they are, at the moment, 35 points down, West Torrens doing it well. Big pull up in ruck, got the thump down, taken by Williams. The handball across to Francis was good. The Magpies long into attack. Wilson's there, and the big fellow's taken it. Big Nigel, who came onto the ground in the second quarter, and he's been a focus at full forward, Rick. He must have heard me because just before half time, I said he was a little bit gangly. I said he wasn't taking the ball first grab. Well, the last two occasions that the ball's come down there, Brian, he snapped it. Big Nigel Wilson lining up, puts through his second goal. The limited edition 1.8 litre Nissan Pulsar Reebok. With two and a half grand worth of extra value at no extra cost, you'd better run for it. Or you'll miss out. It's a Nissan. That's my car. For brake repairs, you need a specialist. And you might as well have the best. Welcome back to Football Park. Our live coverage of the grand final in Nissan Cup Reserves. Port Adelaide 5 7 37. They trail West Torrens 10 6 66. Into attack. Opportunity now for the Eagles. Jerry Tui, probably one of their best. He won't hurt, he won't halt. Will go on quickly. He's a natural left footer. Finds Mead with a searching handball. Beautifully chased by Lipson. The kick is in high. Underneath it was Spear. Couldn't take it. 
Good handball out the back there from Stringer. Intercepted by Hill. Goes into Tui. Natural left footer. Should eat this goal and doesn't. It's a poor kick. Real opportunity for the Eagles. Port Adelaide defend well now, and that's a real let-off for the Magpies. Yeah, well, I would have thought that Tui would have been on his right leg then, Brian. I thought that he was running in on his natural leg, and I thought that would have been just a simple goal. Should have been a goal, Rick. I think we all agree with that as he was running directly at it. And, uh, yes, he had the left foot to use and didn't uh, use it all that well. Bullis's handball out. I think the Port defence was struggling then too because they really should have kicked the ball long and wide. They decided on a couple of handballs that weren't on. Still, the ball is in the forward pocket area. Boundary throw in. Bergram from behind. Pull in front. Harper takes it. Now pull the opportunity. Wade is there as well. And the ball goes to the line again. It'll be thrown in. The margin is 29 points. And there's Kemp looking on. It was a brilliant first quarter effort by West Torrens. And the Magpies haven't uh, really done a lot since then. It was a 31-point margin at the end of that first quarter. As I said, it's still 29 points. It would be very interesting, Brian Young, Matthew Hill up in that forward line. So I wouldn't like to be on him uh, in this the rest of this game because I remember last week he came on and kicked four goals and got them into this uh, this final today. In fact, it was about that time of the game, late in the game, that I left my throat here at Football Park calling that Matt Hill mark. But, uh, got my adrenaline up that one. What a magnificent take that was. He missed the goal, but uh, there he is in your screen, brother of uh, former West Torrens player Kevin Hill. And he's a real nippy little player, and I agree with you, Rick. I certainly wouldn't like to pick him up. It was never my go. Get the young blokes to do the chasing. Out of defence. <laughs> Come forward, Adelaide. Wharton now off his left boot. Chips it across to the centre wing. He was after Troy Bond there. Couldn't quite find him. Quick kick by McAvoy. Always oh, tackling too high. That's a, certainly a free kick on centre wing for the Magpies. Adam McAvoy, West Coast lad. Puts it in high towards half forward. Oh, it's all West Torrens, though. Forwards playing from behind. Chapman holding the ball. It's got to be holding the ball. The umpire did indicate that he thought he'd handballed it. On the second account, it was holding the ball, and that was good play by number seven, Mark Kemp. Surely was. Kemp uses the left boot toward the half-forward area. Big fly by Wilson from behind. No one could mark that. Fabian Francis, what a pick-up. Can go at goal. Clever handball across. Darren McKay, walk-in goal, has posted his first. as computerized four-wheel steering. As all four wheels respond to speed and steering direction. Mazda MX-6. Power, control, and the element of surprise. Welcome back to Football Park. There's the scoreline. Port Adelaide making a spirited comeback. Only trail now by 23 points. Troy Bond, plenty of talent, the junior. The McCullough medalist in 1990 from Port Adelaide. His first reserves game today at halfback. Lee Robson, oh, he's caught. Good, good play by, very good play, in fact, as I call it three times, by Mark Kemp, really coming into the game. He's a valuable forward. They need him. That kick wasn't good, though. He gave that straight to Neiman. The big fellas put the ground. That was a good tackle on him. Finally, it's Meade. They come away with it. They'll go over half forward. Bergeron's the target. Kerrison can't take it. Oh, it's knocked forward. Beautifully done by Matt Hill. Opportunity for Bullis if he can get around the big fella in Stringer. Bergeron knocks it out. Greg Boyd should have tried to pick it up. Spear fights hard. In goes Bullis. Caught by Kerrison. Somerville tries to tap it out. And the tempo of the game is really lifted with the challenge from the Magpies. Well, you can so certainly see, Neville, that Port Adelaide sensed a couple of goals there. They've all, all of a sudden turned on the tempo. And it's going to be interesting now to see if West Torrance can steady. Plenty of experience in the screen then through Greg Boyd, but uh, he should have got hands to that one a moment ago instead of trying to boot off the ground, but uh, he'll learn from that. That's holding the ball almost. If you put it out like that, umpire didn't see it the way I saw it. It'll be a boundary throw in. Magpies are tackling much more fiercely in this third quarter, but the Eagles still enjoying a pretty handy lead and playing it well. Bergeron in ruck. Free kick is against him, and it'll be taken by Grimm. No, in fact, it's not. It's Adam Wilkins who takes the free kick. Now, whether he was contesting the ruck. Nice mark by Lee Robson. Puts the ball back towards centre half forward. Well placed to Harper, who takes the mark under plenty of pressure from Paul Stringer. 
who is not a little guy. When he thumps, he thumps hard. Bucky, you could see him. Poor old Harper was out by himself. You could almost hear the, the camels running, couldn't you? <laughs> well, it's not a good kick by uh, Harper into the forward area. Spear picks it up to Woodall onto the left boot, bends it around. That's close. Is it touched on the line? Goal umpire waiting. Goal. Well, a very good kick there by Woodhall, bringing up his first. And West Torrens have answered the challenge. I thought that Port Adelaide straight after halftime have put a little bit of pressure in. They're forcing the ball in, and that was a bad kick there by Harper. But good work by Spear, and he puts it over. And a beautiful kick on his left foot, bringing up Woodall's first goal. And West Torrens just creep away again, 11-6 to 6-7. And Port Adelaide can't expect Torrens not to score, but they certainly are making a, a more diligent effort to get to the ball first, to get numbers around it. There's the score line. They drift back just a little bit, the Magpies. 11-6 plays 6-7. If uh, they keep this endeavour up, they'll certainly be able to score a little bit more frequently than they did in the first half. McAvoy underneath the ball couldn't take it. Bullis with an opportunity. The big fella lopes towards goal, sends one high, wide, and very ugly out on the full. And that wasn't a good shot at goal. Actually, I'm impressed with Bullis, uh, Neville, because he doesn't go to ground very often. He does work for the ball, and he just seems to keep his, you know, glove on, the, on his opponent, and he comes away and really competes the whole time. In his early part of the season, Rick, he showed a terrific promise for a junior. Fell, fell foul of a few injuries, and uh, he'll be a league player of the future for either the West Torrens Club or its United Club between West Torrens and Woodville, obviously. A good player for them. Greg Boyd will have another kick out. The umpire stopped that one. He couldn't go across the goal. Wasn't taken by Wilkins. Harper will attempt to soccer and did it cleverly. Put it back into a dangerous position. Matt Hill was there. Picked up now toward goal. Hockner straight through. And he's posted his first. The Team Nissan Dealer Super Challenge Super Sale. It's like a factory sale at your Nissan dealer. Seven-seat patrol wagons from $29,990. The best four-wheel drive down under. And your Nissan dealer's got a lot up his sleeve. Take a look today. Whether you're looking for a petrol trimmer or an electric trimmer with its adjustable head, there are none in the world like a weed eater. Because only a weed eater is made by Electrolux. And that's the best guarantee you can get. Welcome back to Football Park. There's the scoreline and West Torrens up to the challenge. They kick another one. 12-6 plays 6-7. A 35-point advantage and they're looking the goods for the 1990 Nissan Cup Reserves Grade Premiership. Unless Port Adelaide can pull something well and truly out of the fire. Wilkins to Fabian Francis is good. We know this boy can run. Look at him go. Number 11 for the Maggies. Gets one over the top. That's good play. Has ball to Sarah on the half-forward flank. He'll tip it in high. Wilson, the big man, underneath the ball. They need a grab. He couldn't quite take it. That would have been a handy one. Bad work there by Chapman from uh, West Torrance there. He just ran absolutely flat chat at the, uh, the Port Adelaide player, and he got around him easily. It would have been far better, Brian, to just to run up to him and just hold his run. Exactly. You wait and you prop and you go whichever way the player goes, Rick. That's uh, one of the things you learn in footy. Big Nigel Wilson's taken the ball, tried to kick it out. Big Neiman gets the handball across towards Scott Guy. Kick didn't cover a lot of distance. Wormald, nice one-handed pick up. Across to Pyman. And the Eagles are out of defence. Toward the centre wing area. Harper is there. One-on-one -on -one with Wilkins. But the boundary line wins out. It will be a throw-in. 43 plays 78. Live at Football Park. Very live too. It's a beautiful day. Magnificent weather. Sun shining. Slight breeze favoring the right-hand side of your screen. Other than that, simply superb conditions for our Adelaide Grand Final to be contested today between the Magpies and the Tigers. The actions with the reserve grade premiership, though, put Adelaide in a lot of trouble against the Eagles, and that's the reason why players like Neiman controlling the aerial battles, but the kick isn't good. McAvoy getting plenty of touches. The youngster, as he comes onto the ground for his first run, does it well, spins out of trouble. Plenty of talent there as he goes towards half forward. Wharton, if he can keep his balance, does. He's absolutely besieged by Eagles. The loose ball goes to Lipson. Finally to Paul Kemp. The kick is in high, but too strong, too good. Scotty Geyer in defence. Yes, it was not a good kick. That would likewise wasn't all that good from Scott Geyer. Has made Hopner work hard. Picked up by Lips and the handball across. The opportunity for Paul could have gone to goal. Has given it to Francis. One step and offline. 
1.0 to Fabian Francis. The Magpies go to 6.844. West Torrens at 12.678. Actually, when the Port Adelaide players go forward, uh, Brian, they just seem to be handballing that one too many. I think you'll find if they get a clear leg, they'd be far better off to go one on one into the square. Agreed. Punch down from McKay, McAvoy, in fact, McKay it was. Hoffner to the boundary line, and that's where it'll end up. Now, well, the umpires today, uh, Richard Williams and uh, young uh, Weston, have done a pretty good job. They have, and uh, when you don't notice them that much, of course, that's, I guess, when we think they've done a very good job. But they've made some uh, good decisions. They've let the game flow a little bit, and, of course, that educates the players just to keep at the ball and not, not stop at free kicks. And that always produces a far better game. And after the melee in the first quarter, the players really have settled down. It seemed to have taken the sting out of most of them. Yeah, I think they, uh, after you get a few of those, I think everyone agrees that it's better to play football than have a fight. No one enjoys those, and uh, at least of all those that start them. And I think it always affects the people that start them more than, than those that don't. And I wasn't sure, I'm not pointing the finger, I have no idea who started that melee, but it was certainly a pretty shameful exhibition to start this game. Surely was. Things have settled down since then, and there's been some good football. Kemp puts it out wide. Wade is there, has played in defence, maybe up on the forward lines now as he gets it across to Russell Boyd. Long toward the goal front. That's a great kick. Puts it across the face of goal. And one point only is the score as it's knocked through by the West Torrens defence. So we've played almost 15 minutes of this third quarter. Wormwood will bring the ball back in. He goes short. That is a terrible kick. Troy Bond almost got there. Chapman has it. He'll go off to Scotty Guy. The Eagles work their way out of trouble. Needs to be more pressure from the Magpies if they've got any chance here. That was a good interception on that occasion by number 17. That's Wade, Mark Wade, local boy from Ethelton in the Port Adelaide district to push the ball out of bounds. It's on centre wing, eastern boundary. We're halfway through the third quarter here at Football Park. Paul does well with the body work on Berrigan. Berenson, he's a national swimmer, <laughs> Bergeron. <laughs> and if you're listening, Mr. Berenson, I hope your national swimming aspirations are coming good. 6.945, West Torrens, 12.678. Boundary throw in again. Poole wrestling with Bergeron. The thump over the top favours the Magpies. Down toward half forward. Oh, Somerville well tackled. Lipson is in there. Caught holding the ball, Craig Somerville. It'll be a free kick. It'll go to Paul Williams. The vice captain is, I think, out of his kicking distance. The left footer will put it right toward the goal square. Big Nigel Wilson makes the lead and then drops back. Wasn't a very, very long lead at all. He's put it up in that area now. Wilson pushes out from behind. That is a butte mark, a great mark by Neiman. Over the top, Scott Guy takes the ball away on the run toward the centre wing. Wharton is back there, won't get there first. Wilkins will. And Matt Hill does it well, keeps it in play across to Harper. Harper could have used Whitehouse, decided on the right thing to go to Woodall. Woodall has the mark. Bullis is by himself. Woodall has seen him, but he's decided to go back and have a kick for goal. What would you have done, Rick? I would have steadied because so many times I've seen the player try and get it on very, very quickly and mess it up. Well, yes, I don't know about that so much. I might have tried to get it on. 151 goals. You can't give many away when you kick 151, Buggy. Oh, yes, well, I wasn't going to say that, Neil, but you're quite right. Woodall toward the goal, left foot straight, direct and goal. We've got your watch in the all-new Citizen Collection. Citizen watches for celebration of special gift occasions. Citizens to add to your jewellery collection. Classically crafted in a look that's bold and beautiful. Citizen Pro Master, dedicated to your special sport. Citizen World Time Watches and Perpetual Calendars. Adventure Watches, Alarms and Stop Watches. Citizen in Steel, Titanium and Gold. Citizen, we've got your watch. 13.684 West Torrens, they lead the way against the Magpies. 6.945 in the Nissan Cup Reserves Grand Final. Late in the third quarter, the Eagles seem to have it under control. 17 nearly 18 minutes in, Damian Mead has the opportunity now. Let's watch him go at it. He leaves Greg Boyd behind for a bit of pace. The veteran will play it pretty cagely, though. He's going to get a shepherd from behind. Good chasing by Boyd, but finally Mead gets it forward. The target was Bullis. The crummer will be Hill, but beautifully intercepted by McAvoy. And it's out of bounds. As uh, Matt Hill hits the deck with Kerrison, nothing in that. The young bloke got caught up there. He did a great job to keep the ball into play. And I think Kerrison thought, well, I might as well get him while I can. <laughs> it's a good body clash. The umpire said it was all fair. Bullis, a quick one out of the pack. 
And offline for another behind. So the Eagles go along to 85. They lead West Torrens 45 points, a margin of 40 points. Yes, well, Desi Kemp would be very, very happy with his forward line. Big Bergeron. Actually, it's, uh, you mentioned the swimmer. It'd be a beautiful day to swim today as well here at Football Park because look at the lake over there. It's just fantastic. But uh, Desi Kemp would be fantastically happy with his forward line, Somerville, Big Bullis, and you can see him there. All coaches that I know never, ever feel happy to the last uh, couple of minutes, Brian. Well, I could detect a sense of satisfaction on his face as he as he looked down on his charges. They're doing well. That's heavy body work at centre half forward and court holding the ball was Adam Wilkins. The West Coast boy has done pretty well today, but has had to concede to Tui. Jared Tui puts it in toward the half forward area, the full forward now. Somerville will get back there with pace. Kerrison with him. The ball misses both of those players, and Greg Boyd handballs to the safety of the line. And of course, towards the end of the game, we'll give you our. Uh and our player for the Braun Man of the Match. We do it every week in the Nissan Cup. We appreciate Braun's sponsorship for the year and the players fully enjoy it as well. $105 voucher as the Eagles through Somerville. Another opportunity underneath it with a chance. Harper, he's got all the Eagles, Rick. Certainly is, and you can see there Harper. He's been very, very good today. And you can look at that right under. Eyes on the footy. He had Port Adelaide players coming in from all angles. Just kept his eye on the ball. And when you're 13 goals, 7 to 85 to 6-9, the confidence just comes out of you. That's one goal on a very difficult angle. We're right behind him, though. We can just see what happens with the ball. The wind is blowing straight down the ground, so we just want to sit it to the left of centre. That is certainly not the place. That's certainly left of centre in the point zone, but offline for one behind. Well, he certainly wouldn't be happy, the captain. He's led them by example today. He's been at the bottom of the pack. And, uh, Brian, actually, that breeze is blowing from left to right. He had to aim at the left-hand post to have any chance at all, and he looked as though he aimed inside the right-hand post. Quite right, big fella. Wouldn't argue with 151 goals in one season. No way. As the ball is toward the, the centre wing, half-forward area for the Eagles. Again, out of bounds. Mark Wharton, number 23 in your screen. will need to lift for the Magpies, along with a lot of other players. The margin is 39 points. Quite clearly, West Torrens on top since the start of the game. Bergeron on the mark to uh, see the free kick go to Paul. And Daryl Paul, local boy from the under-17s, puts the ball toward the centre wing, almost a half forward for the Magpies. Lee Robson ever so easily takes the mark over the top. Confident handball back. Well, that's not a good kick by Wormwood. It's across the face. Big mark uh, attempted by Mark Kemp. Chapman did it well from behind, the defender. The handball off. Pyman, the opportunity on centre wing. Went for the bounce. Darren McKay in pursuit. Short and finds Somerville. Somerville in front of Kerrison. Well, I don't know how much was in that. I don't think the umpire was fooled as the rest of us weren't. Somerville toward the half-forward 50-metre line. Wade was in front, but Bergeron has been paid the mark. Actually, yeah, Brian, on the occasion that uh, Chapman, I think it was, coming down the ground, both Port Adelaide players ran at him and just let Pyman run away from the pack. And all he had to do, Chapman, was to get it across and uh, West Torrens are in charge of the ball. Agreed. It's a basic of footy and it's a lack of talking. Look at that kick. That's enormous. Grimm is back there on the line and eventually it's forced through. But Bergeron's kick covered over 60 metres. It was a big leg from the blonde-headed half forward and Ruckman. He has certainly been uh, well up in their best players today. He's given them something all day. Running out of defence is Grimm, one of the best for the Magpies in their efforts today. There's the score line, 87 plays 45. 43 point advantage, 42 point advantage, should I say. Ball to Sarah, opportunity. Oh, he's put it down. That was a simple one. He wouldn't be happy with that. Scotty Guy won't mess it up, though, as he comes down grandstand wing. He wants Terry Woodall. Couldn't find him. Beautifully intercepted by Wharton. He wanted to go on. He was unbalanced and... Uh, Umpire Weston will give him the benefit of the doubt, so Mark Wharton will take his kick from centre wing. For the Magpies, he puts it up over half forward, the 50 metre line. Out comes Big Wilson, but the pack are with him. There's no advantage in that for him. Geyer has a look up, lifts the eyes. He wants Bergeron at half forward, but it's McAvoy doing good things since he came on at three quarter time. His kick is straight down the wing. Wilson underneath it again, and the big fire from Graham. That's the second time he's been up, and he eventually had to get one. Yes, he certainly has, and he's had a lot of league experience. And uh, when you look through this uh, West Torrens side, uh, Brian, they certainly have got a number of uh, players with experience. 
Well, you'd have to say almost all the players have had some league experience. As I looked down the uh, the record at the beginning of the match, uh, I saw very few names there that I hadn't recognised in league ranks before. Perhaps one or two they have all had a taste of it, and it's showing today with the experience. Bergeron. Wallace is wide. Takes the mark. Wormald will put the ball into the forward pocket. Dangerous. Hill is there. Also Somerville. Somerville takes the mark. Hill could have been used, and that is far too easy. The Magpies have let the defence slip again. Well, Port Adelaide, uh, really, since uh, Tyler's been off, and I don't know the reason why he has gone off, but since he uh, his goal-kicking ability has gone off, uh, they just haven't looked like it today. And Somerville and Bullis and those types of players from West Torrens have been fantastic. Craig Somerville, two goals in the second quarter, and just offline with that one, one point only. 13-10 play 6-9 West Torrens well and truly in charge. Actually uh, Neville uh, Port Adelaide I saw them the last couple of weeks they just look slow today compared to uh, the last couple of times and I don't think they've been beaten since about the 12th round so uh, really it's a sensational performance but they have looked slow and lethargic today. Yeah, they just didn't get off to a good start and they just haven't got their confidence back and it was very similar to the West Torrens performance last week against Glenelg. I mean, they were gone for all money at half-time, 50, point, uh, 50 points down. They had a, a good battle in the third quarter, but they still trailed by six or seven goals and who would have ever thought that they could have got back to this position? They finished the minor round, Bucky, in, uh, in fifth spot, so it's a magnificent effort to have playing on a flag from there. This is enormous to finish in fifth spot and to have to go through three finals to get to the grand final and they've done it so well and they're still full of run. Grimm puts the ball out for the Magpies. Wilson looks to have been moved to the centre-half forward key position. That's a free kick. It'll be paid to young Bond and the young McCallum medalist. First game in reserves football. A grand final as well. Puts the ball long toward the full forward area. Back there is Mark Kemp. Is that a free push in the back? Umpire called to be played on. Chapman, the handball across. Somerville roaming wide and far and getting plenty of touches, as is this bloke who's just about the best on ground. He'll be... Uh, highly featured in the brawn man of the match. Jared Tui, that player I'm talking about. Harper has the ball now on centre wing. John Harper goes toward the half forward area. Bullis is out on the lead from behind. Good strong mark taken by Stringer. And something to go on with as well. A few antics. I don't think there was a lot of contact in that one. If there was, Paul Bullis would have been uh, on his back by now. Terry Woodall, this guy that comes through. He's got uh, Hoffner inside. Goes wide to find, in fact, that's Hoffner. It was Pyman that gave it to him. Indeed, on to Mead. His kick is a good one, and the Eagles doing it easily. Yes, well, they certainly are, Neville. You couldn't have uh, put it any plainer than that. They've just been so sensational today. They've won the rucks. Neiman's been fantastic. Bergwin at centre-half forward, and I suppose when you're looking at the scoring, I always say that the full forward, you've got to have a good full forward, and this afternoon, both Fidge and Hodges are the best two in the league, but they've just been winners all over the forward lines. They've had winners up in that 50-metre line, and that's where you win the game of football, and they certainly have been sensational today. Surely have. Ball back in the centre. There's the score line. 94 plays 45. Neiman in ruck. It's done a fine job. Grimm was up there. Mee takes it through. That's strong work. The handball out gives Harper the chance at half forward. Getting there with him now was Wade, but Harper's kick goes into the full forward area. The bounce, which way will it go? Somerville's there. Will he get boot to ball? I think he may have, but it may have been over the line before he did, or else it was carried through for a minor score to West Torrance. Actually, that was a, a, a strange one because uh, I don't think the goal umpire knew where, who had kicked it because he was standing behind the play, Brian. But, uh, oh, West Torrance have just been fantastic today. It's the score line, 14 11 95 6 9 45. A disaster for the Magpies. We expected a lot more from them. Be after their, uh, their win to come straight into this grand final over the Bays. The Bays, of course, won 18 of their minor round games compared to Torrens 9. So you can just a magnificent effort by West Torrens to be in this position. McAvoy back into attack, or in defence at least, showing plenty of courage. He'll chip short. He'll find Wade with that one. The game's really slowed down. If the Magpies have got any chance of improving that score line, I would think it would be with running the ball in very quickly into the forward line. That is good work by McKay. Some valuable touches at half forward. He sends it in high. 
Kemp's the player they're looking for. They want a bit of magic from him because that ball's very hard. Wilson gets his foot to it, but not before Graham will see it over the boundary line. That's good defensive play. Yes, Neville, and you just said he kicks it in high. I think you'll find that uh, gives the West Torrens uh, defenders every opportunity, Brian, and they've just sort of got to try, if they possibly can, when they're coming forward, to try and keep possession of the ball. Yes, Rick, they've got a lot to do, a lot of work. West Torrens just seem to be going from strength to strength, and uh, we mentioned the tremendous effort to come from fifth position as they have, and uh, what a fitting finale for the West Torrens Football Club this will be if they can carry this off. McAvoy has done well since coming onto the ground. Across to Francis. Kemp wide. Opportunity for Darren McKay. Uses speed. The handball into the forward pocket. Now the opportunity. The handball across toward Mark Kemp. Put him in all sorts of strife. Scott Guy saw it coming. And he's raced the ball away from defence. And that's fine work. Left foot kick. Didn't get the man that he wanted. Lipson is in there for the Magpies. Handballs the ball across toward Paul Kemp. And he's carried across the line. Strong tackle. One handball too much, Brian, isn't it, in that forward lines? I know you've got to keep possession of the ball, but you've got to make sure that you can get a clear leg to have a shot for goal. Split-second decision, isn't it, Rick, that you've got to decide, well, am I going to kick it or am I going to pass it off? And uh, there's an example of a, a quick handball, the right thing to do for the Magpies. Baldissera is in there. Got the handball back toward Paul Kemp. Short to Mark Kemp, and the mark is taken. So Mark Kemp will have a chance at goal. He has one goal to his credit. He's having a bit of strife getting the ball back. Uh, Scott Guy is not going to concede him any distance at all and certainly is going to maintain that angle on Mark Kemp. So the former Broadview player, all Australian in 1989 in the Australian amateur team, and six goals last week to uh, in the second semi-final, should I say, against Glenelg. Left foot at it is well across the face. That's out of bounds on the full, and the Eagles will relieve. Quickly, they go on to find Somerville. He's been an important player for them. He was their best last week. Had a big game. That is holding the ball, according to the umpire. And, and that is the siren to end three-quarter time here at Football Park. A 49-point advantage to the Eagles. Yes, and David Mackay's been roaming around Football Park today, and let's find out where he is now. With me in the car park, I have a Port Adelaide supporter, Peter Jones. Pete, uh, three in a row, a real chance? Oh, yes, I reckon we, we will we'll do it. Where Easy. Are you... <laughs> Easy? Yeah. Where are you going to win it? Oh, all, all around the ground. Our followers. Scotty Hodges. Scotty Hodges will kick about ten, I reckon. And uh, our on-the-ball players, Mark Williams, Tim, Tim Geneva, and the rest, will do it. Well, easy. you've got the inside oil. How's Timmy Geneva's ankle? Oh, uh, no worries. Oh. Not a problem. <laughs> It'll stand up all day. Right, eh? is uh, Port Adelaide going to go for the roughhouse tactics? Are they going to uh, knock out the Bays? No, I think it'll be the other way around. I reckon the Bays will be trying to knock our uh, star players out, like young Gavin Wanganine, Scotty Hodges, and a few of the other boys. Have you got a margin for us? I'd say about 11 to 20. <laughs> Good on you, Pete. Thanks Good again. Good <laughs> Welcome back to Football Park at three-quarter time. Look at the Eagles, a stranglehold on the game. 14-11-95 for Magpies, 6-10-46. Yes, they have played well on the goal scorers uh, as we look at them for the Eagles. Bergeron 2, Somerville 2, Woodall 2 and Me 2, and Wilson 2 for the Magpies. Yes, and David Mackay, our roving reporter, has been a busy man today. Let's uh, find out what David's doing right now. Glenelg supporters come from far and wide to uh, support their team. This gentleman's down from Queensland. Uh, sir, you're a Glenelg supporter. By, by golly, yes, I am. Wonderful, wonderful to see all these people here from Glenelg. And uh, what was that other team? Uh, they Port, Port Douglas? Uh, no, don't worry. Uh, don't worry. We've, we've got a wonderful team in Glenelg. And all these people, Scotty Salisbury, he'll be out there. I, I heard he had uh, seven games recently. Uh, seven games were doing uh, something. But don't worry, if he was a cabinet minister in Queensland, well, he, by golly, uh, don't you worry. He'll be under control there. And uh, wonderful to see all these people here. I reckon, by golly, uh, Glenelg, don't you worry about that. They'll they'll win the game. And Port Adelaide, well, uh, Port Adelaide, uh, they're uh, going to be a Japanese takeover anyway. Don't, don't you worry. Uh, <laughs> MFP down there. All these people, wonderful to see all you here. Don't forget National Party. We're looking for people to join us again. And I'll be, don't you worry. I'll be taking over Canberra. And uh, all these people, all taking control. Don't you, don't you worry about that, Mike. Thank you very much. 
Hey, Bucky, which was David McGuire? Uh, I don't know, but uh, Joe did a pretty good job, didn't he? He, he, he certainly, uh, you know, a, a much youthful, more youthful Joe, should I say, than he has been previously. Oh, that was beautiful. Well done, yeah. David McGuire. The unbelievable stuff. Well, of course, as we know, Bucky, there's been nothing between Port Adelaide and Galil for the entire year, and of course, the grand final is going to be an absolute rip snorter of a game, but, uh, the, you know, the, the, they've been tight games from day one right up until now. They surely have. Port won by 20 points in the Foundation Cup. Remember, Glenelg were premiers in that cup. Yep. In that minor round, Glenelg by 26 points was a Monday night game, and that was a that was a great game. But the best of the encounters thus far was the round 12 one, Ken, where Port won by 20 points, and that was played on a Sunday. They moved the game from a Saturday to a Sunday, and there were 25,000 people here. Great that game. was an enormous game. And, of course, the second semi-final, Glenelg by 11 points. But you're right, two all. Pretty close. Yeah, it's Lionborn, of course, Bucky. The atmosphere here is amazing, a football park. I arrived here at about, I drove past Footy Park about 8 o'clock this morning. There were, there were cars everywhere, and the atmosphere is absolutely fantastic. There's nothing better than grand final days. Oh, it's great. Look, Ken, I'm really enjoying this grand final day. I never enjoyed them when I played in them because there was always, always too much tension as a player. But to be here, to be involved in the atmosphere of it, just to, you know, a day like this when the weather is, is perfect is tremendous. Um, I've got a little bit of a rumour, Cage. Can I, well, oh, yes. Peter, Peter Maynard arrived with his bag and his gear today, and that's that's interests me a lot. Really? Because I wonder why is Peter Maynard wasn't named in the 22, obviously. So, so what you're saying is that Peter Maynard, it, 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 it may be a, a hoax by the base. It's a possibility, but uh, he certainly was here with his gear. Look at, that. at a big lunch. <laughs> it's a beautiful sight from the Channel 9 chopper there, Bucky. And, uh, you know, really, the league couldn't have got a better day. And, uh, well, as we said, nothing between the two sides. It promises to be a, a great clash. Would you have played Peter Maynard? I would have played Peter Maynard because I think he's a finals player, a player of great experience, a tremendous player. And uh, I would have thought that uh, he would have been in the side. Maybe just he might be. OK, we'll wait with a great deal of uh, interest about that particular situation. Let's take you now to the last quarter of the Reserves Grand Final. Your commentators, Neville Robertson, the Jumbo Prince. Thanks, Ken. Only minutes away or seconds away from starting this final quarter. With Des Kemp making his way back into the aerial view from the grandstand. Final quarter. Grand Final, Nissan Cup Reserves. West Torrens lead by 49 points in the ruck. Big Neiman, but it was Poole who got it away. Kemp out of the centre of the ground. Puts it in high. Chapman will jump from behind. It's Mark Kemp, but it's Chapman in front for another good mark. Yes, a superb mark there by Chapman. He's been a very, very good player today on the halfback line. He hasn't made too many mistakes as I speak. Like fair dinkum, you can't go anywhere without making a fool of yourself. And young Fabian rips in and kicks his second. It was a great effort on that occasion, but mistakes that they cost you goals. And on that particular occasion, Fabian Francis read it beautifully. Good hands. Let's have a look at it in replay. And uh, the idea was good, Rick, but his pace and skill there showed up brilliantly. Yes, he got uh, in between the, the two. And, well, poor Chapman, after I'd given him a bit of a rap, he'd only made a couple of uh, bad blues. Look at this. Calling for the ball across there. Look at the pace of the young bloke. Guernsey's ripping up alongside of his back, and he streamed in and kicked his second goal. Well, if they're any closer, you could say that that would be a, uh, a real team lifter. And I know Port Adelaide teams, I know that jumper, and uh, you can't ever write them off. There's only 43 points in it. It's only 43. That's eight goals, but we saw ten goals kicked here a couple of times over the last few weeks, and the Bays lost two games being in that position. So the Magpies forward again. Lipset will be there for the Magpies. In front, Scotty Guyer. He wins out to give the ball over to Hofner. But it's intercepted again by Lips, and he's working hard there. The Magpies with a chance across the centre of the ground. Till he puts it down. McAvoy's had the opportunity. Chapman through with courage. He gets the ball forward. Finds Woodall. Now they've got players forward. The Eagles in turn pull us on to Somerville. In turn to Mead. In they go, the Eagles. In fact, that was uh, Chapman who put it over before. Bullis is high. Grimm is there. He's been one of the best for the Magpies. Good defensive work by them to force the ball over the line. And, uh, they just can't get it through consistently through half forward, Rick, yes, the Magpies. Never. Yes, they can't, but uh, that uh, went out on the full. And the little fellow that's got hold of the ball now was absolutely sensational. Young Matthew Hill kicked four goals, got West Torrens where they are today. And this would be a great goal if he could cap it off. He can do some wonderful things, but on this occasion, just uh, not up to it. And Shane Grimm with the ball. He's been a very good defender won most of the aerial battles back there and they haven't had too many winners the poor old magpies today as mckay chips short and finds wharton he's been an opportunist too made the most of his opportunities as he puts it in toward half forward over center wing at least anyway underneath it doing battle there is chapman he'll go to the boundary line with wade and they fall over to the amusement of the crowd there's graham corns in your screen 
he's got other things on his mind besides brawling eagles and magpies, of course. He's certainly got magpies on his mind, but I don't think many eagles. There he is, Chapman. Nothing much in that. And we'll have a throw-in in front of our commentary position, centre wing. We've played two minutes of the final quarter, live from Football Park in the Nissan Cup. Yes, it's been a great performance by the Eagles. Magnificent uh, weather conditions down towards Robson. He can't take possession. Boyd with a hurry kick towards half oh, Good defensive work by the Eagles by Chapman. Thumps the ball away, and the ball goes out of play. Great performance by Des Kemp, the uh, coach of the Eagles. They're going to call you Bucky. I didn't see you slip in there, Ken. You didn't row for the Magpies, did you? No, the red and black's my colour, uh, Rocky, that's for sure. Thumped away. Chance now for Chapman working hard. Body over the football. And umpire Wesson will call for a bounce down. Well, certainly ideal conditions here at Football Park. And there's David Brown. He would be absolutely shattered. A hamstring problem, not able to take his place in the Port Adelaide lineup. Chance for Woodall. And a good play for the Eagles. Back towards. Uh, a half-back flank, but it's out of bounds on the four, and young McKay will take the free kick. Darren McKay with a spiral punt kick towards centre-half forward. Wilson high off hands. Wilson goes in again. Bodies over the football, but umpire Weston will call for a bouncing. Well, it's certainly been a great performance by the Eagles, Jumbo. Yes, it certainly has, and I think you'll find that Des Kemp would have stressed at three-quarter time, OK, we've got the game under our keeping. But you could easily sit back, Ken, and uh, Port Adelaide kick four or five goals, get a little bit of confidence uh, also, Nev, and uh, they could come right back into it. Anything can happen, and it's only a matter of time now. If the Eagles can keep them out for the next five or six minutes, time and arithmetic might just beat them. Stringer, the big man from behind, pushed it to ground. Good, strong work by McKay, but equally up to the task was Jared Tui. It's through the centre of the ground. Paul Kemp lifts the eyes, has a look, and that is good work from the Magpies to find Russell Boyd. Playing out of the centre, certainly been high in the Magpies' best. He'll put it in high. He wants a big one from Kemp or from Wilson. They set themselves off. Wilson almost. Bottom of the pack. That looked like Neiman who took the ball and put it back only as far as Boyd and the Magpies. It's on behind play. Wilson has led a few and they're all in it back there. Russell Boyd in your scrape but the action's there with Wilson and with Lee Robson and they are doing it seriously back there I can assure you. Gee there were some big punches thrown then by Wilson and Robson I can tell you. Two big guys almost standing toe to toe uh, reminiscent of the uh, of the incident before the ball was bounced in the uh, opening quarter Rick. yes it certainly was and lee robson there he thinks to and he's a rough tough customer anyway and you can see this here with big neiman getting the ball out oh there they go and you can just sort of see it in your screen the start of it but uh, oh they've come off uh, pretty equal i think ken two big guys up towards center half forward it goes off hands wharton working hard gets a hurried handball away Lipson, Robson, kick is smothered. Kemp, that's Mark Kemp, and Paul Kemp takes the mark. So Port Adelaide, they're still working hard. He's about, uh, I'd say, 40 metres from goal on a 45 degree angle, going with the very, very slight breeze. And yet to boot a, a big one. This will be a very important kick for the Maggies. If you can get it. The kick's on its way. He'll get the distance. The accuracy is the only concern. It's home. I go to the Maggies. All aboard for Stratcoast Teal City. There's extra attractions to make your stay even more enjoyable. See the Stratco home sheds. Top quality garages and workshops and superior to a tin shed. Features include a five-year structural guarantee, bold high-strength walling, gutters, downpipes and roller doors. Good reasons to insist on a Stratco home shed. Visit a Stratco Steel City near you at Jets Cross, Richmond and Lonsdale for factory direct savings. That's the score as we return to Football Park, the grand final of the Nissan Cup. Port Adelaide kicked their eighth goal and they tie a little closer. Can they do it again as McKay has it on the centre wing, puts it in high. Fabian Francis couldn't quite complete that. It was Mark Kemp. Back of the pack was looked like Graham as he pushes the ball wide towards that half-back flank, and that is a good kick to touch by that player. It's too late, though, Neville. Uh, do you think oh, seven minutes into this last quarter they're going to have to kick, uh, what, uh, six or seven goals? But uh, we saw it last week, Ken, didn't we? We saw it with West Torrens getting up, so Port Adelaide still not out of this yet. That's for sure. Never give, uh, never say Port Adelaide are done. Williams, the handball is taken by uh, Torrens over towards two. He's been a fine player today. This man's played superbly for the Eagles. Bergeron wobbles a kick towards centre wing. Harper foot. Kick is smothered superbly. Port Adelaide have possession now. Wilkins towards half-forward it goes. 
two equal, went without the football, kicked off the ground, back towards Mead, but the ball goes out of play, right in front of the packed grandstand here at Football Park. The atmosphere magnificent. And Rick, the Port Adelaide players have paid a terrible price for a slow start. Yes, they certainly have. They got, got off to a bad start and they just have played catch-up football all day. But as I said before, uh, Nev, uh, with Tyler going off early, they just their, uh, their goal-scoring power was just completely taken away and it certainly has been the case. Yeah, no focus at full forward. No one to really kick a lot of goals and put a lot of pressure back on Kemp and company up there and they just weren't up to, uh, to that task. There's the car park view just briefly. I can assure you the car parks are absolutely chock-a-block here at Football Park. It's a fantastic atmosphere out there as you walk around the tents and uh, the barbecues and whatever happening out there. And that'll be going on until uh, early this evening, I would think. Lipson comes out of the pack, finds Francis. A little bit of luck, but maybe and Francis takes the mark. Just uh, backwards of the 50-metre line. Too far out to score. Off goes Wilson. No other options. He'll go to the square. Big torpedo. Wilson will be underneath it for the Maggies. They need a crumber, I would think. They've got one. Lipson dispossessed. Mead there. Over the top is foot. He chooses the... And Graham Campbell wouldn't be pleased with that, but the game is well and truly in their keeping, I would think. Isn't it amazing in a grand final, all the uh, little rumours that are going around just before the big game? I've just heard Craig Elias and Liptak are going to be the reserves. A lot of people have said, Brian, that uh, Maynard's brought his gear. So isn't it amazing, the, uh, the mystery surrounding the big final? Well, it is, Rick, and I've just been down to the Port Adelaide rooms and as quiet as quiet, you could uh, not find... You could hear a pin drop down there. It is amazing, the tension and uh, Port Adelaide will start with the 18 players and the two interchange that they named in the press. And uh, that's the, the message from the Port Ruins, but there is an awful lot of tension down there, as there ought to be in a grand final situation. Big Grimm up over the top, got the tap down. Hill was very clever across to foot. In there again is Grimm trying to get it out. Pack of players, eventually Kemp gets it out to McAvoy. The handball is on to Russell Boyd. Will use the left boot or decide to run around. Oh, he shows surprising pace. That's great work by Boyd. Long toward the full forward area. Back there is Jeff Graham to take a strong mark. And he'll relieve the pressure. Put Adelaide players forward, not really reading the players down the ground. There was no one at the end of uh, Russell Boyd's leg there. He just had to push it in high and just kick to a wall of eagles. Whitehouse has it, eastern boundary. He'll go through the centre. He's got Mead there. He's been a good player also. He'd be higher than the Braun player of the day. Tui, another one, would be very high in that award. He's had a sensational afternoon, and he did it early when things were tough as well. It was Pyman who got it over to Chapman, and forward go the Eagles. McAvoy playing well. Been great since he came on at three-quarter time. Kicks around the body. As far as Russell Boyd taps forward, gives the opportunity out there to Troy Bond, turns and twists, finds a player through the centre, and that's Mark Lipson. He wants to go on quickly, either it's blocked, but at least he's forcing something to happen, Lipson. He's everywhere at the moment, pushes it in high. Kemp hesitates. Graham is there. Finally, it's Mark Kemp comes out with it, turns it around the body. Opportunity in the square, and that's a good mark taken in the square by Paul Stringer. In fact, what Mark Wharton, that is. Made ground from the wing. Let's have a look at it in replay. Yes, a beautiful bit of play there by Kemp. He's needed to uh, perform a lot better than he has done today. He's a very elusive half forward, and uh, he hasn't done enough today to uh, to get Port Adelaide the points. Only metres out. Shouldn't have any problems with that. He comes in and kicks his first. Every night, we stack the shelves. You know, home brand is a good brand. Really? Yes. Our range is great. This is really cheap. Your need home delivery. And we've got lots of lower prices for you. So special. Many ways to say. Well, the warm ones, fresh food people. For fresh food people, we know a lot about groceries. Well, the warm ones, fresh food people. With so much more for you. There's much more for everybody. Back in the centre, there's the margin, a clear five goals. The Magpies attempt to go into attack again through Russell Boyd, picked up by Paul. The Maggies are running at the moment as the ball goes toward the half-forward area. Back there working in defence is Hoffner, doing it well. Handball across looking for Pyman, in fact, well over his head and getting there first, Darren Mackay of Port Adelaide. And it'll be a boundary throwing. Braun man of the match, Jared Tui. West Torrens, an outstanding performance today from that man. Absolutely controlled the game in the first half. 
and uh, he's one of the reasons, one of the major reasons, that West Torrens are enjoying the 30-point advantage they are at the moment. Yes, I think that uh, Neville hit the nail right on the head when he said that he was doing it tough when the uh, the tough part of the season was on, and the, uh, the guard of the game was on. Uh, he was brilliant early, and now uh, he's deserved to be a little bit tired, Neville. Indeed, he's uh, handed over the reins for some of the... Uh, or for the other part of some of the hard work to... Uh, to his teammates, but he's still around the ball. He's still getting some hard touches. There he is, number 33 in your screen. What a fine player he's been today, and he'll take a lot of satisfaction away with himself and the cup for the Nissan Reserves Grand Final. In the ruck is uh, Paul Bullis. He goes against Paul. Off the ground was Wilkins. He's had been a bad player for the Magpies in defence. Paul Kemp goes to the boundary line. He's met heavily by players and earns himself a free kick. Number 18 was uh, purported to have a chance to play in the senior game today with the absence of... Uh, David Brown and possibly Tim Jennifer. Of course, we know that Tim Jennifer got up with some of that magic mud. Bucky, you might know something about that. I know as much as you do about it, Neville. I, I wonder whether it's psychological or what it is. It, uh, it came from afar and it's done the trick, whatever. And he didn't look, to, didn't look a chance in heaven at uh, 5 o'clock last Saturday evening. It's, uh, of course, a week's a long time in football to coin a cliché. He's playing at a grand final, and that's all, that, that's all that matters to him and the Magpies. Paul Kemp sends them into attack. Good take by Wade at half forward, and he was in with it, within 45 metres of goal. Started in the defensive area, now finds himself at half forward. Local boy from Ethelton, Mark Wade. In he comes. That was a good mark as well. He puts it up high, long. It'll go very close indeed. That's a goal to the Maggies. The Team Nissan Dealer Super Challenge Super Sale. It's like a factory sale at your Nissan dealer. Six-cylinder Skyline Executive, automatic, with power steering, only $18,990. And your Nissan dealer's got a lot up his sleeve. Take a look today. This man is meticulous in the way he repairs brakes. He has to be to earn this badge. When you need brake repairs, you need a specialist. And you might as well have the best. Back in the centre of the ground, the Magpies making a late charge as we're over 14 minutes, almost 15 minutes in to the final quarter. Williams goes uh, forward, taken by Lips, and the mark wasn't paid. Wharton is in there over the top of the ball, looking for a pass. Oh, gets boot to ball, has given Kemp the opportunity to go the goal, and he's put it through. The Magpies on their way back. The Team Nissan Dealer's Super Challenge Super Sale. It's like a factory sale at your Nissan dealer. Six-cylinder Skyline Executive, automatic, with power steering, only $18,990. And your Nissan dealer's got a lot up his sleeve. Take a look today. This man is about to hit the brakes. Lives depend on his timing and skills with his machine. Fortunately, he has those skills. When you need brake repairs, you need a specialist. And you might as well have the best. Got a contest on our hands here at Football Park. Port Adelaide trial by 31 points at quarter time, 28 at half, 49 at three-quarter time, and now they only trail by 22 points. They're a real chance to get, or 18 points, should I say. Three goals is squarely the difference between the two as it goes through McKay's feet. Woodall now, the Eagles sense that they're in a bit of trouble. They're going to have to lift their work rate again. Somerville gets the long handball over. Probably should have kicked it. Bit of pressure now, and we'll just see. Here he is again, Tui. When everything, whenever it gets tough, you can count on Jared Tui for the Eagles today to be in the thick of things. Tui from half forward. Yes, a beautiful bit of play by Tui. And I think you'll find that the umpires could have easily given that hold in the ball, Neville, but I think you'll find that he punched the ball out and quite rightly got holding the man. Forward they go now, the Eagles. They love a goal right now to try and seal it. We've played 16 and a half minutes of the final quarter. And there's 18 points in it. And that is a great comeback from... Uh, that's a 31-point turnaround so far this quarter by the Magpies. Can they do it? I said earlier in the game that there's never a Magpie Guernsey down and out. And from any position, there's always a chance. But really give them a chance at three-quarter time. Paul Kemp, the Greg Boyd is good. Before they go again to Maggies. They need someone to take a catch here. Or at least to get a crumb behind the pack. As Neiman Wade couldn't take it. They need some harder workers if they're going to win this one, the Magpies. Mark Kemp now, playing from half-back. Caught with the ball is Whitehouse. Gives up the ball to Somerville. Plenty of pace. Oh, he's got Burbridge shot. Get a chance for Big Fella. He's run around two players. He's got nowhere to go. Gives it up. Goes as far as Williams. Stringer, in fact, it is. He goes towards centre wing. Fabian Francis there to Whitehouse. 
Whitehouse towards half forward. It's in high. Kerrison from behind manages to spoil and it's out of bounds. Well, the great thing about this, Neville, is Torrens did it last week. And I suppose you'll start to look at the clock and to think, well, we're only a couple of goals up. And it could easily happen again. But it could easily happen in the opposite this week. Port Adelaide getting the money. Indeed it could. And we've seen the Bays go down twice, having had leads of up to 10 goals or nine goals in the past month. Matt Hill couldn't quite get clear. Kerrison desperate. Now he's actually held onto the foot of Matt Hill and there's a free kicker with Bank. And that was uh, a bit silly by Kerrison. He just, now Hill was on the ground and he still had hold of his ankle. And they'll pay a serious pri price for that. Well, in fact, the kick out of bounds on the full is the free kick that's been paid to the Eagles. And uh, it looks like Matt Hill. David Foot, in fact, it was who put the ball long to the square. Bullis from behind. What a mark. Goal umpires looking at it and said, well, you've marked it inside, lad. He's going to soccer this through. No, he's not. Look at that. Well, when things are tough and tight, you need a forward, Brian, in which to take a grab. And that shows a fair bit of maturity from the young fellow. Rick, what would you do in this situation? You've been in it plenty of times. Well, he's got to go the back screw. He's got to be confident enough to hold the ball right and just be confident in his own ability. Paul Bullis, one goal in the first quarter. Lining up, crucial shot. And he comes using the reverse kick and it's gone well across the face. In fact, it's given the Magpies about 30 metres extra. It's out of bounds on the full. And that's a real bonus for the Magpies. Wilkins to put the ball in toward the centre wing area. Players set themselves. Up in front was Wormel. Didn't take the mark. Off the back, it comes toward Spear, who gets across to Tui. Tui short pass in. Somerville the opportunity. 60 metres out. Tumble punt forward. One-on-one -on -one battle. Bullis spoiled away by Grimm. Bullis will get there first again. He's in the forward area. Gets around one player. Handball off to Harper is good. Harper can go at goal. Oh, the, the kick. He was undecided whether the handball or the kick. And he made the wrong decision. And for the first time, Rick Torrens are under pressure and they're making the appropriate mistakes. Well, they've had the opportunity to bring up a couple of goals in the last couple of minutes, Sonny. They've, uh, well, the pressure that Port Adelaide are putting on and a bit of a sniff of victory, Neville. That's what happens in the game, especially in the grand final. And if I can just make the point that a lot of individual players at Torrens now might start to do the things you do when pressure happens, and that is be individual and go away from your game plan and the team pattern that made them successful for three quarters we've seen some wild shots of goal maybe instead of giving off and there's des kemp he would be worried but time's on his side with 20 minutes in it'd only be 10 minutes at the most and the eagles really just have to keep working hard because the magpies don't have a lot of run in their legs at the moment neiman punches it in but it's all the magpies back there they can set up and go forward number 30 is stringer that's paul stringer he has a look he'll go wide well the kick isn't that good bergen almost stole it Adam Wilkins now. He's been a good player for the Magpies. The kick isn't good. It's into a wall of Eagles. Fabian Francis is there. So too is Hoffner. Got it out to Scott Geyer and turned to Tui. His kick is brilliant to find Neiman. I wish someone had picked that player up if I was in the Port Adelaide camp. Yes, well, Big Neiman's been sensational today, whether it be in the ruck, standing on the half-back line, just stopping the ball there. And that was great work then by West Torrens to put the ball into a, an advantage spot where they can score a goal. He'll go short, and that is just so loose. There was one, two, three players they could have picked off. Woodall called in Harper, and the skipper, been a good player today, yet to kick a goal. In fact, uh, he kicked four last week, five last week, was one of their best. Great skipper's game today. He'll kick from 30 metres, 45 degree angle, and this will certainly put the game out of the reach of the Magpies if he is successful. In he comes. And he's offline. That's his second point. So the, the Eagles now 14 12 96. They lead Port Adelaide 11 11 77. Yes, well, that was a bad miss by Harper. He missed it up a couple of minutes ago and he had a, a, an opportunity to sort of really put himself back up on the map. But he's been a very good player all day, so we can't uh, really grizzle too much at him. Almost 22 minutes played in the final quarter. West Torrens are under pressure, but they have a lead. And uh, the Magpies are trying to get it back. Just 19 points, bounced down by umpire Richard Williams. The ball almost at centre half forward for the Eagles. Bergeron in ruck, over the top came Williams. The tap down was good, Kemp took it away. Wilkins wide, but his kick is uh, thwarted as he was tackled from behind. In there on centre wing, picked up by Woodall. Wide handball, back to Wilkins again. Whitehouse from behind. Well played 
by Troy Bond. The young fellow, McCallum medalist, puts it in toward the half-forward area for the Magpies. Off hands, they really need a goal here, but West Torrens in defence, doing it well. The handball out. Hoffner got it across. Chapman to Spear. Wasn't a good handball. That's put him in heaps of strife. That's a better handball, Chapman. Across toward Woodall. Woodall in toward the runner. The handball across comes to Tui. Tui long on the left foot into Bullis. Bullis is from behind, but he's marked it. Well, he had two players to beat Paul Bullis. That was sensational. He has a great mark there. Eyes on the footy. Two Port Adelaide players coming over the top, both Paul, and you can see there that the elbow came down on top of him, and Bullis is saying, you just have a look at the scoreboard, and I'm just going to go back and with another opportunity to put this through. He'll be only 20 metres out, but the angle is fairly acute, and he'll remember his last shot at goal a moment or two ago when he was well offline, across the face. Now the bounds on the full, and this will seal it for the Eagles if Paul Bullis can convert. Right footer, taking all the time in the world. Capacity crowd at Football Park, waiting for the big encounter. The Tigers versus the Magpies. The action is with Paul Bullis. Right boot at it, and that is dead set straight through the centre. Well, he's the type of player, I suppose, when you've got the reserves, and he gives the high fives on that occasion, and the West Torrens players rush in to congratulate him. He's been very, very good up forward, and I suppose the only thing in the, uh, the players' minds at the moment is for next year. And I've been impressed, Brian, at a lot, number of players, Somerville, Bergeron, you've got Bullis up forward, and Tui has just been sensational. I know it's a bit of a different play, but they have been very, very good players, uh, and it should go all well for next year. Yes, it surely should. Back in the centre, the bounce down. Grim in ruck, but Neiman's got higher. Taken away by Somerville, who's uh, had enormous numbers of touches today. Toward half forward, Mead has taken a strong mark. Damian Mead will go short. In fact, he may have uh, had a re-kick at that. The umpire didn't see the poor player come from behind. Bergeron's picked it up easily. And as you like, has popped it on the left boot and scored a goal. Well, the pressure, you can see the pressure relieved a little bit now. And they were right under, and I think you'll find that Port Adelaide possibly gave a bit of a yelp, which, which I expected. And Bergwin's brought up his third. But look at that, the Port Adelaide player just whipped over the top of him. The big Berger picked it up on his left foot, and I think you'll find the sting has gone out of this game. And, and to Dev's Kep, congratulations now. I suppose he'd be 25-minute mark. He'd be looking at uh, the final siren to go. The margin at Football Park at the moment, 31 points in favour of the Eagles, and they seem to have this one well and truly wrapped up. Out of the centre of the ground at the 25-minute mark, we're into time on here. Giratui with the ball, Shane Grimm there as well. The ball is kicked in high. That's Lipson who puts it in underneath it is Robson. Good strong mark to that player. He's been a good player for the Eagles. He goes wide, looks for Chapman. Oh, that's a poor kick from Chapman. I don't know where he was trying to go with that. It's thrown out now, but only as far as McKay. He was held without possession. That looks like Pyman with the ball, and he'll get the free kick. Actually, Neville Robson's performance today, he's been uh, not a league regular during the year, and his performances today almost weren't, you know, looking forward to next year. Yes, he's still got plenty of run on those old leagues, and uh, with the new club that uh, probably will unite the Torrens-Woodville merger. Lee Robson might have just had a sprinkling of, uh, of age, which is all very important when you've got a lot of youngsters around. 26 minutes gone, the Premiership Cup in the Nissan Reserves grade certainly will lie with the Eagles. As Jared Tui, the best man on the ground, heads towards goal, he's caught. Goes as far as Stringer, he's caught. Back to ground, Meade goes towards the boundary line. Opportunity for McAvoy. He's close to the boundary line and can't control it. We'll have a throw in. 16-12, 108, Port Adelaide, 11-11, 77. A magnificent finish to the Eagles season. And uh, the last time, as we've mentioned, that we'll see West Torrens, we think in these Guernseys, these colours, and what a way for them to, to come off the finish as David Neiman puts the ball into Darren Mackay's hands. It'll be a throw in on centre wing. Over 27 minutes played in the final quarter. Boundary throw in. Players set themselves. Wade will contest in ruck for the Magpies. The tap down by Neiman. He's given a cross to Pyman. Onto the left boot he goes toward the forward area. The bounce keeps the ball in. Tapped over cleverly by Tui to Mead, and that's a high tackle. Must be a free. 
There's meat on the ground. Live at Football Park. And we'd like to welcome all our viewers from Melbourne, courtesy of our network friends, GTV9. The Victorians joining us. We've given you some good weather today, the same as you gave us yesterday for the AFL grand final. What a beauty it was, too. Conditions absolutely perfect in Adelaide. 21 degrees, virtually no breeze in the stadium, as you can see. Virtually capacity in Adelaide means about 50,000 seated people. What you're looking at now is the reserve grade premiership between West Torrance and Port Adelaide. And the game got off to a good start with the Eagles. They're the blue and yellow colours. And uh, they've had a good lead all day. They led at 31 at the first, 28 at second quarter, and 49 at the third quarter. And now they extend their lead to 37 points. A good goal to two in. And the Eagles, Brian, just too good, too strong all over the ground. Yes, they have been, Neville. And uh, Damien Mead, in fact, was the kicker of that goal. It was his second goal, the former Warrnambool player. And uh, he did it well. Got the high tackle. It was pretty obvious from Greg Boyd, number 22 for the Magpies. In the spirit of the Magpies, they've trailed all day. They made a late comeback in this fourth quarter to get within 18 points. But it just wasn't good enough. The Eagles have gone away again. Indeed they have. There's the score line, 17-12, 114. Port Adelaide, 11-11, 11 77 the Premiership Cup well and truly with the Eagles. Joining me in commentary today is Brian Cunningham, former Port Adelaide player, skipper, Premiership captain, state player, and Victorians would remember him rucking to one other commentator, Rick Davies, former Sturt skipper and uh, South Adelaide coach, then Sturt coach. Hawthorne player, of course, for a brief period. He's holder of the South Australian most goals in a season, 151, and of course that's been challenged today by Port Adelaide Scott Hodges, who's on 149. He needs five goals only to top the record. Yes, and he's been in tremendous form, Hodges. 13 goals uh, in his last performance last week against North Adelaide in the prelim final. As Wormel goes uh, forward, Woodall in fact it was, toward the full forward area, but taken by young Adam Wilkins, the West Coast boy, who's up from the under-19s, and he's done a pretty fine job today for the Magpies kick out wide. Gives Kemp the opportunity to go towards centre wing. Russell Boyd playing in the centre has done a pretty serviceable job for the Magpies. The ball eludes him. Taken by Scott Geyer. One bounce through centre wing toward the half forward area. McAvoy, is that a mark? Umpire didn't pay it. Kemp the handball off to Wilkins and there's the siren. Final score, West Torrens 17-12, 114. Premiers in the Nissan Cup reserves. Port Adelaide 11-11, 77. That's uh, a very elated group of Eagles you can see on your screen there. They did it brilliantly today. They held on despite a run from the Port Adelaide group late in this final quarter. Once again, 17-12-114, Port Adelaide 11-11-77. Stay with us. There's plenty more action on night. Wide World of Sports after the break. Welcome back to our live coverage of the Nissan Cup Reserves Grand Final between West Torrens and Port Adelaide. And on the oval, I'll throw to Kim Dillon to make the presentation to the captain of the West Torrens Football Club. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you will agree the Port Adelaide Football Club were very worthy of their berth in this year's Reserves Grand Final. But it was a fairy tale come true for the West Torrens Football Club in their victory as the 1990 Nissan Cup Reserves Premiers. I would now like to call on Mr Jeff Beck, the Regional Sales Manager of South Australia and Northern Territory from the Nissan Motor Company to present the Nissan Reserves Cup to the captain of the West Torrens team, John Harper. I now call on John Harper to respond on behalf of his club and his players. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Port Adelaide Football Club. They're a great club, a lot of tradition. And with these boys here together, six, four weeks ago, didn't know where they were going. I think we've just walked out with a bit of glory and a bit of history. Thanks very much for supporting us. Well done, fellas.
If everybody could please show their support in the appropriate manner as the West Torrens players perform their lap of honour. As Kim Dillon said, what a fantastic sight, a fairy tale come true for the West Torrens Football Club. A lot of the young lads, there's some experienced players as well. But they, uh, they did it from the uh, fifth spot, which is also a very, very difficult thing to do. And they're certainly going to enjoy their night tonight. Congratulations to the reserves at West Torrens. And stay with us because we're only minutes away from the South Australian 1990 Grand Final between the Magpies and the Tigers. Oh! 